you have to believe yourself, you know. If you don't believe in yourself, I mean, no one can believe it for you, you know. You have to believe in yourself, you know. And I'll just believe in that path, you know. You Every path you take, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be, you know, it's going to be hard. Every, any way you want to go, it's going to be hard. So I would just say really focus on that. And if anyone's telling you, no, don't do this, or, like, when you're in that path and people are telling you, like, no, no, you did that already. Let's, like, let's go out, like. No, you know, because those same guys, you never even know if you're going to be talking to them in like 10 years from now. So, you know, mm -hmm. you got to focus on that bigger picture because when you get there, then they're all going to want you. Like when you get to that moment. So just focus on right now because that's what's going to benefit you 10 years from now. right now shout out team i am i know maddie y'all always ask like why are you always in your car because i be making moves moves all day every day 2021 into 2022 connections building my network building my brand staying motivated all of that and today as you've seen as i had popping guests before we got to even popping guests a youngin that's not just you know what i'm saying rolling on the track also rolling in his life in general, you know what I'm saying? Actually just committed. I'm going to let him introduce himself personally. I'm just letting y'all know that we got some fire athletes, some fire dreamers, fire people who are talented on the squad, definitely building every single day. Yo, go ahead and introduce yourself for people who have no idea who you are. Yeah, my name is Shamali Little. I'm from New Jersey. I was born in New York. I moved to New Jersey when I was about four years old. I just committed. To, as he said, it's Georgia University. So, you know, I'll be going there for the next four years, take my talents Sheesh. to Georgia. <laughs> Sheesh. Pause. I didn't know you was from Jersey because I'm from <laughs> Jersey, born and raised. Where in Jersey are you from? I'm from Central Jersey, like that Trenton area. That's where I'm from. Okay. I graduated yeah. West Orange High School, if you know what that is, Essex County. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what that is. Facts. Jersey gang <laughs> in this. Okay, I actually love that. We started off all on the positive foot. And you talked about how you committed. So, um, obviously, I don't know if people really heard, but you run track and field. Yes. What events specifically? I do the sprints and hurdles, specifically the 100, the 200, and hurdles. For people who don't know, SEC is literally, like, the number one conference. I just say in the world, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you have to be very, very good, obviously, to go there. You have to be committed. You have to be dedicated. You have to be serious about what you're doing. How old are you? I'm 17. I turned 17 in August. Dang, just yeah. turned 17. That's crazy. So let's start. Like, I always ask people, like, how did you even get into track and field? You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, they'll be playing football and then their coach will tell them, like, yo, just try track. Some people will have an older yeah. sibling who ran track. Like, what inspired you to get on the track and start running? So actually, it was almost to how you said, you know, I played every sport as a kid. I played baseball, basketball, football. So it was actually... When I played basketball, um, I played for a pretty good team called Team Rio. And, you know, there was this parent that just said, you know, you run on them fast breaks really fast. You know, like Usain Bolt on them fast breaks, you know. I yeah. run the court, catch the ball, go for a layup. And she was just like, you know, you should try track. And that year, this is when I was about, I started track when I was like eight. So, you know, this was about when I was eight. And literally that same year when she told me, to, you know, go do track, I won the States when I was eight years old for that division. I ran to 400. So that's how I got into it. Dang, that's crazy. So at eight years old, that's very young, yo. I didn't start track till I was like literally in high school, I feel like. A little bit in eighth grade. But at eight, like, I don't even know if you can remember when you're eight. <laughs> Were you thinking like, I'm doing this for fun or I'm taking it serious? Can you even take track serious at eight? Like, how is, how is it? You know, it. Everything that I do, I take it serious. But I mean, when I was eight years old, you know, I just all I wanted to do was just beat people. That's all I wanted to do. You know, every yeah, time I go on the line, I didn't care if the person was like 15 years old. I want to beat you. I don't care who yeah. they were. I just wanted to beat them. So it was it was fun. So yeah. So the love for winning encouraged you to obviously train harder and do better. And I obviously know in order for you to get to the level you're at, you weren't just doing practices that your coach told you to do. Were you doing like extra stuff too on oh, the yeah, side? Go 
yeah, I would go home, do core, you know, I would do some runs, you know. And this is just when I was a kid. So, you know, I was always been dedicated to it. Everything that I do, I'm going to be dedicated to it. Yeah. Um. So at like what time, what point in time did you switch over to that elite level of not just doing what your coach says, but also doing extra? What point you know, in time was that? I think when it was that transition from elementary school to middle school, so around sixth grade ish, but more specifically okay. seventh grade, you know, this is realized when I realized this is really what I want to do. And this is my way out of uh, getting out where I'm from, you know, and getting money from doing what I want to do. And um, yeah, that's really when I realized that, you know, I had the talents to take it to the next level. Yeah, I'm glad that you said that you're young, too, because a lot of people like I mean, I, at least the last track athletes that I've had, a lot of them did start when they were younger, but they're older now. They're about like 22, 21. And you said you're 17 and you made yeah. the transition when you were in middle school. So what that means is that someone who's watching it could be like, OK, it's not too early ever to start taking something serious. It, it never is too early. As you can see, like your living testimony you took something early way before you took something serious early way before everybody else usually in the world does. You know what I'm saying? And that's why you're at the level you're at now. Were you always good? That's really the question. Were you always good from the first or like what? You know, matter of fact, in my first race I ever did in track, I actually fell in a 200. This is in a 200, not even the hurdles. You know, there's still a video. I hope I can go dig it out. I mean, there's a video. I was just running the 200. The last 50, I literally just fell. You know, I was, when I first started track, I was getting beat left, right, and center. I mean, it was not pretty. But, you know, I didn't care. You know, I just wanted to keep getting better. Even when I was a kid, you know, I just wanted to go out there, run, get better, and get faster. So, I don't know. I wasn't always good. I had to work to get to where I'm at. So, when you lose, what is going through your mind? Like, like, yeah, What when you lose, what is going through your mind? I want to see that same kids that beat me and I want to do it again. You know, I want to rematch, you know, I want to do it again. Like, you know, let's line up again and let's race again. Cause I'm not going to let you beat me two times in a row. I know I'm at least beat you this next time. Yeah. So a lot of people, when they lose, they either give up or there's some type of confidence that that's taken away from them. That makes them nervous. Maybe the next time they'll compete against somebody or it just make them completely stop. You know what I'm saying? So you're yeah. saying it, it, it drives you that, okay, I lost. But now I need to, you know what I'm saying, do more and do better in order to win the next time. So okay. when you're competing, I'm guessing in my head, it's I don't want to say it's all about beating other people, but a big part of your drive is knowing the person next to you is trying to beat you and you don't ever want to lose. Is that like a lot of your drive? Yeah, that's for the most part. That's really what it is. Yeah. Okay. And did you have someone like when you were younger that like kept beating you or like, like, how is that? Yeah. You know, it's funny that you said that. Cause literally that same guy that I was about to say, I literally I'm training with him right now. So there's this guy named Fitzroy Legister, you know, since I was a kid, he's from uh, that Jersey city area. Yeah. You know, I'm talking like from when he was eight, he was the big dog. You know, he's a kid that everyone fears. Like you see him going he's like, Oh no, I do not want a piece of him. Yeah. He used to just beat me all the time. And I remember there's one day I beat him. And I told my dad, I was like, dad, I just beat Fitzroy. And like, we were happy because, you know, I never beat him before. And he was like the king of New Jersey for the kids that was like under 10. So just to beat him, that was crazy. Yeah. And when you did win at that point, did you look at yourself differently? Or like, was it like, okay, now I have to beat someone else? Or because this is why I'm asking that. You could become number one. A lot of people come number one and they become complacent. They're like, oh, well, no one can beat me now. Yeah. And it's like, whatever. So you had to beat someone, become number one, and turn on another, you know what I'm saying, switch in your head. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not number one ranking, but in your head, you know what I'm saying, number one, the best person in New Jersey. So when you did beat him, did something else switch in your head to say, now I need to beat someone else? Or it was just like, like, like what was going through your head when you realized the person that was beating you all the time was beatable? Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, because when I beat him, that was the regional. So next up was the Junior Olympics. So I know I couldn't just to stay focused on what I just did. You know, if I stay focused on what I just did, someone else at uh, Junior Olympics is going to come beat me. So, you know, I had to just switch my focus onto Junior Olympics. What just happened, happened. You know, I got to focus on what's next. Yeah. And obviously, if you're doing good in track, you're going to go from high school level to to junior olympics nationals maybe yeah. usa junior team what have you 
gone to as far as meat wise that wasn't like scheduled on your normal high school schedule like what elite meets have you gone to championship wise i know you said like the junior olympics like is there any other meets that you've gone to yeah i mean so there was actually this invitation of that you only get invited to you're really an all-american that was at the meet there was they had this meet in arkansas and uh i got invited to that to run against uh it was the meet this actually the kid broke a national record at that meet his name is Jalen Slate he broke the record at that meet so I got invited to there okay so junior Olympics because I'm thinking all right high school wise let's let's think high school wise yeah after your after your normal um high school meets then what are you doing AAU because the so, reason I'm asking before you even answer the question is because someone thinks that I mean, there are kids we know that just go to high school practice, just go through the normal season, and then they end up very big. But those who I talk to, and I know myself, we took track to another level, one practicing on our own outside of normal practice and going to meet outside of the season, summertime, AAU, yeah. multiple, like, like, so what were you doing after your track and field season? Like, are you on an AAU team or what? Yeah. So after the high school season ends, you know, there's also another big high school meet, meet that technically doesn't count for the high school. It's called New Balance Nationals. It was called that, and they switched it to now it was Nike Nationals. It was actually in Oregon. So mm-hmm. I ran there. I came fourth. That's where I broke the New Jersey State record at fourth. And, where, and, fourth in the you fourth in the nation. Yes. Yeah. For what event? The two hundred. Okay, facts. Yeah. What time did you run then? I ran uh 20.75. That's the state record in New Jersey, man. Okay. So you have the state record in New Jersey. I just got to You got to clap it up for that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. You know what I'm saying? I already know that's the way, like, like that's something that a lot of people, majority of people, 99.9% of people, even in the world, cannot say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's definitely a blessing. You got the state record. You ran that. Did you do anything else after New Balance Nationals or like? What? Yeah. Um. So there was an AAU season I had with my uh, teammates. We went to Florida, the Club Nationals. That was in Florida, and we ran the four by one, and I did the hurdles too. But I only ran the heats of the hurdles. I only did the four by one final. We came second. We just came miss first place in the four by one. Yeah. Ones. So I, I remember you saying you do multiple events. So like the hurdles, two hundred, one hundred, like four hundred two or no. I do the 400, but that's more like relays. I don't really run the uh, individual 400. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, Georgia may put you on a 4 by 4 We don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's whatever, honestly. Uh, may be fun for you. But if there's one event that you could be number one in the nation when you get to Georgia in, let's say just one event you can choose, what is that event? I'm going to say the 100 because, you know, the 100, it's like if you win the 100, you're – to me, you're the fastest man. Like, if you're a yeah. pro and you win the hundred, you're the fastest man. You're the fastest man in the world. So, yeah, you know, I want that title. Yeah, fact. So, is there anything that you had to kind of get through, or or you had to kind of change, maybe in high school or middle school, to take yourself to the next level? For example, me personally, it was the extra practices um, that helped. It was the not going home after practice and like playing video games you know what i'm saying it was studying people who i saw in the olympics you know what i'm saying watching those videos being assessed with that what is one thing that may have taken you from okay i'm known in jersey i'm a good track runner to actually like i am the best in new jersey has ever seen so what i had to do was i never got satisfied you know i remember my freshman year you know I win a race, I'll be number one in my county. And then I'm like, yes, sir. I'm number one in my county. You know, no one can stop me. I'm like, first yeah. of all, you're not even the best in New Jersey yet. So you know you're not even the best in the country. So the fact that I'm getting excited over being best in the county, I know I had to. My dad told me that, because my dad's my coach. He said, you know, you're number one in the county, but these other kids in Texas and Florida, they're not playing. So mm-hmm. you, know, you want to just keep being happy about being number one in the county, you're not going to go far. So. You better change that. Yeah. Now, um, I know you mentioned your father or whatever. Do you have any siblings at all? Yeah, I have two siblings. Uh, okay, two are siblings. they older the than youngest, you? Though. No, I'm the youngest. Okay. Did they run track at all or any sports? They tried it. I mean, they're not really like they, – they tried it. Yeah, they're not really, you know. Yeah, okay, facts. Was there any – like what is the inspiration 
behind you then running track did you see someone else run or was it just offered you as an opportunity to do like well um since I was a kid, there's this big meet called Penderley's in the especially in the northeast area, America, yeah, in the northeast area. It's a big meet. And my dad has been taking me to that meet since I was like four years old to see. And the atmosphere there is crazy, you know, yeah, especially with the Jamaicans there blowing the horns. And you know, he's been taking me to that meet since I was like four years old. So, you know, yeah. that was that was a very big pipeline to just, you know, go see those races every year. Then, you know, that had a big inspiration in me on me. You know, I wanna go there and run in Penderley. So Yeah. Penn Relay is definitely like one of the most amazing meets. You've run there yeah. before? Yeah, I ran there actually in the 4x1 in the Championship of America. My team came seventh place in the 4x1 against the Jamaicans and stuff. But actually, what was crazy about that, you know, the next year, we really thought that we had a chance to win the Championship of America. But that was the uh, Kobe year, so. Okay, facts. Yo, honestly, it's so exciting really just hearing somebody talk, one that's from Jersey, but also is – like young, because the past couple of people that I've interviewed have been already in college or yeah. been to JUCO and then going to college. So you're fresh in high school right now, right? You're a senior? Yeah, I'm a senior. Okay. So you have a whole nother season left, indoor and outdoor, or I don't like, because indoor, yeah. I did indoor in New Jersey. Are you doing indoor? Yeah, I'm doing indoor and outdoor, yeah. Okay. When is your first meet? Uh, It's going to be the 18th at the uh bubble. Tom's River. 18th? Yeah, yeah, the bubble. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yo, I, I literally, their armory, yeah, yeah, I already know about every, it. Every like, New Jersey track athlete has to know about the bubble. That's literally just iconic. <laughs> it's like the only place to go, honestly. There's yeah. one other place in North Jersey that we went to, but it was, like, not a good track. So the bubble, yeah, everyone knows about that. Yeah. Now, all right. people side after this season you for what like all right i'm not even gonna say what made you choose georgia i want to start off with when did the college process start for you so who no. was the first person who hit you up that's what i asked yeah. who was the first person who hit you up what college i think my the first letter that i got was from i think the university of rhode island this was my sophomore year that was the okay. first letter, right? Yeah. And when you got that letter, when you saw that there was a letter for track and field, what was going through your head that day? That was crazy because, you know, the fact that it, that someone sent a letter to my school about me yeah. to, yeah. you know, participate in college, that was crazy. I mean, yeah, it was just crazy. Yeah. And obviously at that point, what would you say, like, was your number one school? Like, if you could have gone anywhere when your first letter was sent, what where would it have been? Well, you know, I would say my dream school ever since I was a kid was USC. So, you know, at that time, I was really like, waiting on a letter from, like, USC and all those big schools. I was really on a letting a letter from them. Yeah. So, training hard, waiting for that letter. You get the letter from Rhode Island. Then when when did the D one start coming into play? Did you run something fast and you got a yeah. call or like how did like when did you get that notice in your head to where it was like, I mean I know I could go D one, but they yeah. just showed me through their recruiting that I really am D one worthy. Yeah, so my sophomore year I won the state right. So but then after literally as soon as after that meet the season got canceled. But during that time my first like real major d1 offer was from Te oh not offer like, i just got a letter and it was mm -hmm. from texas university of texas so, you know mm -hmm. when i got that letter i was just like wow like yeah you know, you know you hear about some of these coaches on tv and now you're like this coach even knows that i exist it's like that was yeah. crazy but um so a lot of people think that you know my recruiting process really started early like no it really didn't like after my junior year once i dropped i probably say after the states because I won the 100 and 200 at the States last year. And yeah. really after that, that's when my recruitment really started to pick up. You know, I really started getting on the phones, with a lot of calls. I remember, I don't know if it was the first one, but I know one of the first ones I remember was from being on the phone with the coach from Ole Miss. And that was okay. really the first ones I remember. And, you know, I would go to track meets, you know, the coaches would meet me. I'd have like home visits. So really around like June, 2021, that's when it really started to pick up. And especially like by August, I had my top five out. Okay, and your top five was what? Because I looked at your Instagram profile yeah. 
and I saw you was going on visits. What was your top five before you chose? So I had my original top five was Clemson, Florida State, Florida University, um, and Miami. And I can't remember the fifth one, but I just know that it changed. I had through because Georgia has a Georgia didn't even reach out to me to, at that point. So mm -hmm. the next top five was Georgia, USC, Miami, Florida, and Texas. Oh, Texas was the one that I was missing from the original one. So that was my final top five. Okay. All right. Yeah. So when I hear that top five in my head, I'm thinking. If I had that top five, who would I choose? Like, probably Florida, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. kids grow up, like, we grow up, like, we see the kids on ESPN with the hats out and everything, and we <laughs> really want that. That's what we want. We want the yeah. option to be able to choose from two schools that no matter which one you choose, they are on ESPN, on NBC, on Nationals, like you already know. So it's glad that you got that to experience that, to be able to choose between top schools now georgia hit you up yeah you had options already what was the difference between georgia and every other school that hit you up so you know it really hit me when i went on the visit you know when yeah, i'm on the visit, always, i really always. got here i really got a chance you know to um talk to the uh team my future teammates who would be my teammates when i eventually chose there talk to them especially the coaches you know they really gave me a game plan of how I can be great with them. And, you know, that plan really just hit me. And I, I started to believe, I believed in that plan. And uh, the facilities at Georgia, I mean, it was mind blowing. I mean, yeah. even like, I mean, you know, not even for the track team. I mean, like I went to the football plays and they had Lamborghini seats as, in their locker room. I mean, I saw that. I'm just like, <laughs> what are you doing with Lamborghini seats in the locker room? Like yeah. that was crazy. And just all the facilities, you know, and how much they just really care about the sports, even like the athletic director. You know, Georgia is one of the biggest football teams in the world. I mean, I just be play, they're playing Alabama, right? And you said one of them, probably like the number one right now. <laughs> yeah, sure. I think, yeah, I think they're ranked number one. And the fact they had a game the next day against the number eight team in the country at the time, which was Arkansas, and their mm -hmm. athletic director was just spending the day with us. You know, that just really shows that the athletic director is really caring about all the programs, you know, not just yeah. football. He was really caring about all the programs, and uh, and I also I really bonded with the teammates. You know, it made me feel like home. So, yeah, and, and that's really good. I was gonna say like, yeah, they do care about their athletes. Now, tell me like a little story, whether it's thirty seconds, one minute. The the second you knew you were going to Georgia, what was that? Were you talking to one of the teammates? Was it the second you saw the Lamborghini seat? Was it like <laughs> the flight home? Like, what was that second to where you were like? Yeah, I'm gonna go here. No, yeah, it's funny because I actually told one of the uh the guys that were on the team, you know, like, I'm coming here. Like I yeah. told them that visit, but when I realized, I really just think like after they gave us the whole facility tour, I, yeah, I was just like, nah, I'm done. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm coming here. Yeah, and I think, yeah, after that, I didn't even go on my other visit. I, yeah. I just canceled that visit. I just you know, said I'm going here. Yeah. So finally committed that is like very very big i remember i committed to kansas like just so it's like relaxing knowing that you have a very popping school literally one of the best in the nation track and field um every year you know what i'm saying different events yeah. um can't even choose a specific one like it's different events they always top now you're still in high school what are your goals for indoor and outdoor going into your senior year I want to break records, you know, that's really what I, I want to break records. And also the number one goal is I need to get a national championship. You know, I need that ring from like either Nike, Adidas, New Balance for just winning the nationals and like either the 100 or 200 hurdles. I just know I want to win a national championship before my senior year is done. Yeah. Got to win the national championship. Honestly, I do believe you can win it too. You know what I'm You got to bring it home yeah. to Jersey because that'll oh, literally yeah. be icing on the kick for you to oh. now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Transition to Georgia and come there and be like even more impactful. Your biggest vision for track and field, a lot of people have the same vision, but I want you to tell me like what is your biggest vision for track and field? 2024. I mean, I want to be on Usain Bolt's level. I just don't want to be, you know, an ordinary track and field athlete. I, I want to be the greatest, not just yeah. the regular athlete that, you know, goes to the Olympics and compete. You know, I want to go to the Olympics, win, 
and do stuff that nev someone's never seen before, you know, win the hurdles and the sprints at the Olympic Games. Like, you know, something different that no one has seen before. I just want to be great. Now, you must have some doubters. You must have people maybe in your school, like, you go on a visit. Because, I trust me, I had, I don't, I had <laughs> it. So I'm just guessing you may have some, like, Oh, he didn't really get recruited by Georgia. He just sent them this. Or, like, I, I didn't run track, so that's why he's the best on the team. Like, how do you handle that at a young age? Like, knowing yourself that you're great, but other people, you know what I'm saying, maybe doubting you, even people closest to you. How do you handle that? You know, I just know what I can do, you know. So whatever they think or whatever they say, I know, first of all, I control it, you know. So they say they don't control what I can do, you know. I control everything that I want to do is in my hands. So I want to go and work hard. I can be the best I can be. If I don't work hard, then I'm giving them what they want. So, you know, I just know that I control it. I need to go to the track, work hard, and I control everything that everyone's going to say. Yeah. Now, um, of course, you're not getting into Georgia unless you have a certain GPA. You know what I'm saying? Like, I talk about this with all the track and field athletes. Was there ever a point, like, this is kind of a two-part question. Um, The first one is a yes or no question. Was there ever a point where grades may have been an issue with you going to a D1? No, I mean, unless you count that I had all Bs my freshman year. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, that's not really a problem because I, I think that's, I had a 3.0 GPA my freshman year. But now I have a 3.5 GPA right now. Okay, that's great. So now you do have that GPA. How can you go to class knowing that you are going to a school that's about to be on ESPN? I think they were playing Alabama literally today. How yeah. could you go to class with people who may have doubted you, a teacher who may have even doubted you, knowing that you just, you literally are going somewhere. They're going to see you on TV. They're going to see you on ESPN. They're going to see you on NBC. How are you able to still go to class and do your work, do your math, and it's like, I'm already there yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, how are you able to do that? That's the real question. I mean, because you got to focus on the bigger picture. I mean, like, if you go to class, you can mess it all up. You know, if you don't stay eligible, like, you literally cannot go to that school that you work so hard to. You can't get there if you're not in the class doing the work. So, you know, if you just go to class your senior year, just because now you committed, you can still mess it up. So, you know, even now, I'm still focused in the classroom. You know, you just stay focused. Focus on the bigger picture, you know. Don't be like some of these people that now, like, they left high school and now they're talking about moments in high school. Like, no, you don't want to talk about moments in high school. You want to talk about moments you're going to have after high school. Yeah, facts. Um, So have you picked your major for, like, speaking of academics, have you picked your major for Georgia or what? Yeah, I'm going to do sports journalism. Sports journalism, okay. So obviously you're an athlete, like you're interested in sports, but why jur journalism? Because you obviously have like sports management, like all different other ones. Why journalism? Was there something specific? Someone recommended it or what? Yeah. I like to just write my mind. And like when I see something, I like to um, write about it. And even specifically sports, like, you know, I'm a big like analytic fan. You know, like I every morning I wake up, I'm watching Skip Bayless, Max Kellerman, Stephen A. Smith, all those guys on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I watch every single sport. I mean, I don't just limit. I watch basketball, baseball, football. I even watch, like, cricket. You'll catch me watching cricket on the TV. So I just mm -hmm. watch everything. So I really feel like I have a great mind. Yeah. Um. Now, you said you write things down. Go more into that. Like, are you just – like writing it down randomly you're just walking in the middle of the street and then you think something you write it down like what, what do you yeah. mean by write things down? i mean like i mean i still just i sometimes just write about my day like you know what went on in a specific day like my commitment day you know i just write about how that day went how i was feeling in school just stuff like that i just write i just write it down now why are you writing it down is there a reason like no just it's really just to write you know i just mm -hmm. like and then also just looking at it about like you know maybe a week later you know like wow like uh, this is what i was thinking at this specific time so i just find that stuff interesting yeah it's definitely interesting how long ago did you start doing that mm, probably like last year especially during covid like when we were um on remote learning and you know there really wasn't like a lot to do so i was just doing that yeah so even outside the track, I know you said you're writing. What are other things that your fan base may not even know? You know what I'm saying? 
that you do when you're not on the track? I know you said you watch ESPN, all of that. Is yeah. there anything else that you do? Uh, when I'm not practicing or doing schoolwork, you know, I like to play games. You know, I mean, I'm not. I'm just. I like. I have a PC. Uh, I have a PS5, you know, and even though I'm still doing all these things, I also have a job too. I work at a, a, a Jersey Mike's, you know, so I'd be yeah. Very, yeah, I have a job too. So. so, all right, you said, let me let you like remember, you said you have a PS5, you also have a PC. You said the PC first though, so are you like, <laughs> did you start off with PC gaming? Because I hate playing games on well, the computer. <laughs> well, I didn't start on PC, but that was like my most like expensive purchase so like when i got the pc i was like i really started moving over to the pc but i started on ps like the ps2 mm -hmm. yeah. now what games are you playing specifically on on like what is your favorite yeah. game uh i like sports games but probably either either fortnite or 2k because I, I love playing basketball games especially just like playing with friends like that's yeah it's fun yeah um yeah facts um <laughs> Okay, that's that's actually interesting. So it seems like you do have like, cause in high school, I just know I did have time and then I didn't have time. It's like it's like depends. You know what I'm saying? So if you're saying you play video games, you run track, you do extra practices, and you work, do you feel like you have like your whole day is just like planned out? Do you feel like you like go home at the end of the day and you're like extremely tired? Like, do you feel like sometimes? you do too much like how do you feel like your schedule is right now with everything that you're doing and have going on you know i feel personally for me it's fine you know we practice monday tuesday thursday and saturday we practice four days a week so those days when we practice i'll come home eat mm -hmm. school work probably by then i'm tired so i'll probably go to sleep so those days I usually I usually don't game throughout the week because you know I'm just tired and just you have to go to sleep for the next day, and the days I don't um, practice, you know I'll get home from school, I'll go to work, I come back at like nine ish, like I said. By that time I'm probably tired, so I'm probably not gonna game. So I'll just go to sleep. But then on the weekdays, I practice, you know, and I'm home, do some more extra work, or on like a Sunday do a run. And then those are the games where I can just do stuff that I usually want to do. But through the weekdays, I just know it's really just business. I just focus on what I got to do. I like that. Um, and I can see that you're disciplined with everything. If you could give somebody advice in high school, I usually go like younger. Like I say like if you're 16, but you're literally like, what do you <laughs> that? If you could give somebody advice, I'll just say somebody advice yeah. who wants to be at your level in track and field it could be anything you could give them advice that has to do with life motivation yeah. track doesn't even have to do with track what is one thing that you would tell them well first of all you have to believe yourself you know if you don't believe in yourself i mean no one can believe it for you you know you have to believe in yourself you know and i'll just believe in that path you know you every path you take you know it's not going to be easy it's not going to be you know it's going to be hard every any way you want to go it's going to be hard so I would just say really focus on that. And if anyone's telling you, no, don't do this, or like when you're in that path and people are telling you like, no, you know, you did that already. Let's like, let's go out. Like, no, you know, because those same guys, you never even know if you're going to be talking to them in like 10 years from now. So, you know, mm -hmm. you got to focus on that bigger picture because when you get there, then they're all going to want you. Like when you get to that moment. So just focus on right now because that's what's going to benefit you 10 years from now. Hell yeah. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying, 17-year-old record holder, you know what I'm saying, representing New Jersey, just committed to UGA, SEC, D1, one of the top schools in the nation, in the world. I say I am Dino. I am a motivational speaker. I'm an All-American. I'm an athlete. I'm blessed. I'm strong. Who do you say you are? No, I'm just, I'm just me. You know, I like to go outside. I'm a hard worker. And... I'm just, I'm a leader, you know, I don't do, I don't follow what anyone says, you know, I just, I'm a leader, you know, I don't, if someone has a, something that they want to do, you know, no, like, I don't follow anyone, I just lead. Yeah, continue to lead, honestly, bro, you're going to stay blessed. Um, Thank you for being on this stream specifically, you know what I'm saying, this is not going to be the first show that we do, I definitely <laughs> want to follow you on your path, not just in high school, but also in georgia and to the olympics as a pro athlete because i already know it's going to happen um let's do this here let everybody know where they can follow you on social media 
Follow me at King Molly, you know what I'm saying? At King Molly. Facts. And let everyone know again your name, how old you are, and what school you're going to. Molly Widow, I'm 17. I'm going to University of Georgia. Go dogs. Sheesh. <laughs>